Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to start working on the mobile-friendly version of our River Arts Cafe small business website. Okay, so we've created this nice little desktop version of the uh, homepage for this uh, small cafe website and we even have a print friendly version but now let's work on a mobile version because as it stands right now if somebody visits this web page using a small scale tablet or smartphone it's not going to be very friendly to them um, it's a very wide layout with a horizontal scroll and we want to do our best to always avoid these horizontal scrolls on a web page so let's go ahead and take care of a few things now this is a very important step but back in one of the, in the in one of the first videos when we were first setting up this page I added this oh sorry there it is right there I added this meta viewport and that's an important step when you want to make a mobile friendly web page and I would encourage you to start including this meta viewport on every web page you make even if you don't think you're going to make a mobile it doesn't hurt to have it there and it's a necessary step when you do want to make that mobile friendly page so meta name viewport content equals width equals device width sometimes you'll also see some sites use initial scale set to 1 you can do a couple parameters in there um, and you can also deactivate, I don't know why you'd want to, the uh, pinch and zoom capabilities. But um, I think we're good just as it stands. Let's head over to the CSS and hit, this is how it's going to work. In our same CSS file, I'm going to use an app media rule. And I'm going to say app media screen and max width. I'm going to choose 900. Oops. I'm going to choose 961 pixels opening curly brace closing curly brace so basically any computer screen device that comes to this web page and they are 961 or smaller they're going to use these rules now we have to be cautious because we have one CSS file that has rules for widescreen and now rules for small screen. So we can't just delete things like we would in a print style sheet with a separate external CSS file. We need to actually negate some things. We need to cancel stuff out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is focus on the container and the navigation menu. Those are some pretty critical steps. But you're going to notice right away that with the container we can really make some drastic changes. So by default for our big screens, our container is set to a fixed width of 960 pixels and centering margin. That's actually going to be okay there, but this width is going to be a big critical step because 960 is way too wide for a small handheld device. So down in the mobile friendly area of the CSS, I'm going to create a new rule for the container and I'm going to set the width to 95%. So the new width will be flexible, but it's only going to be flexible for small devices. For bigger devices, bigger than 961 pixels, it's going to be a fixed width site. So just this change alone is going to give us quite a difference. So if I save my CSS file, head back over to my browser and refresh, everything looks fine at a widescreen, but as soon as I go mobile, Notice my page is much narrower. Notice I don't have that horizontal scroll at the bottom either. See that? So already we've taken a really big first step to making a responsive web page. Still have the side by side down at the bottom, but now I want to work on this navigation menu. So, next order of business is to create a rule for the nav. And I'm going to go ahead and create, um, let's see, I'll do the entire nav first just for the sake of having something here. I'm going to go ahead and put in a text align and center and that'll ensure my text gets centered. There's a few ways we could have done that. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my nav margin and padding are set to zero. Pretty sure they were but I want to kind of change things up a little bit here. Before my list items for my navigation menu were side by side. I really want to change that now. And I'm going to do this in an interesting way, I think. I'm going to take my nav unordered list, comma, my nav list items. Now before, on my big screen, my unordered list was floating to the right and my list items were all floating to the left. I'm going to take all of these and float none. I want to negate their floating characteristics. So before, my unordered list was float right, my list items were float left. I want to cancel all of that out. 
and I'm going to say float none. This is going to put them one on top of the other. So if I head back to my browser, let's make sure I'm in a small scale and refresh. There we go. You can see my menu items are one on top of the other as I would want. Now to manipulate the anchors that are part, that are really um, the hyperlinks. So I'm going to do a display block because I want to make nice big buttons here. And I'm going to set the width to about 90%, so almost as wide as their parent container. And I'll go ahead and set their height to 24 pixels. I'm going to make kind of wide rectangular buttons. I'll set a little bit of padding on them, five picks top and bottom, zero left and right. It can be zero left and right because my text is centered, so the text won't be right up next to the left and right edges anyway. And I'll go ahead and put a border that we can see nice black border and I'll set a little bit of margin to separate them four pixels top and bottom we'll do auto left and right this will make sure that our buttons are centered horizontally on the page and maybe a little box shadow I think box shadow looks nice with um, button effects do a little one pixel X one pixel Y two pixels of blur and a super dark gray and let's see how this is looking there we go. So now we have buttons and because these anchors are block, notice I can tap or tap anywhere on this large rectangle to activate the menu. So we have our widescreen version, menu and container. And now we have our narrow screen version. Container is now flexible and our navigation menu is vertically oriented with nice wide buttons. In the next video, we'll tackle some more steps for making this mobile friendly site.